podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. No breaks. No breaks. No fear. No fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Welcome along. I'm Ian Brannan. Now joining me as our special guest this week is the Wolves and Edinburgh captain, Sam Masters. He's the leading point scorer in the championship currently and also, as it stands, the second top point scorer this season in the Premiership as well. And he was involved in one of the big fixtures of the season so far as his Edinburgh Monarchs edged out the Glasgow Tigers by just two points in that Championship Knockout Cup competition last weekend. He was also one of the few riders who managed to get to the first bend on that Premiership fixture on Monday night as Wolves lined up against Peterborough in a meeting that was abandoned after just a little bit of heat one. Plenty more about that to come in just a sec. But it was Bellevue Aces who went top of the Premiership with a win in the last heat against the Ipswich Witches on Monday night. What a conclusion to a sensational night of Speedway. Take our wins in. The score actually won't reflect how tight it was in the end. We'll hear from the Bellevue Aces top scorer Mate Zagar, Ipswich captain Danny King and much more besides, plus quite a bit of spotlight shining on the championship this week. We'll hear, of course, from the Edinburgh captain Sam Masters because he's with us. We'll also hear from Chris Harris, Leon Flint, Ryan Douglas and Ulrich Ostergaard. All that, plus Scott Nichols gives his thoughts on how the Grand Prix series of 2022 is going so far. All to come in No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks. No fear. The official British Speedway podcast. So lots to get through. And uh, first of all, let's introduce our guest then. The Wolves and Edinburgh captain and leading point scorer in the championship. Second top scorer of premiership points so far this season. He is Sam Masters. I'm very pleased to say will be with us throughout this episode. Hey, Sam. Hello. <laughs> well, last year was a good season for you because I think you, you did score more points than anybody else, certainly in the championship. Uh, and that form's carried on so far this season as well. And, and you you are one of the four men. And obviously, Wolves are coming strong as well. Yeah, it's been good start to the season. Uh, it's always hard to do have two good seasons in a row, really. It's sort of, uh, I don't know, it's hard to just back it up, I think. Um, but yeah, if you, if you go off like the Speedway star averages, which count, which count um, the... Um, bonus points and every pretty much every single meeting you've done in that on top of the averages in both. In fact, I've got a higher average in the premiership than I do in the championship this year. So uh, it helps when you're enjoying it. It helps when you've got good people around you and uh, I've got that and I just hopefully I can continue enjoying it like I do and um, and, and so and same with the people that are helping around. They, they're enjoying it with me, I think, and yeah, it's been good fun. Let's um, start by talking about the fixture on Monday night. Of course, uh, it was abandoned after one attempted race. Uh, you made it round the, the first corner just about. Um, tell us about the, the track because people will have maybe seen it on, on Eurosport. They showed that first heat where the, 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 all of the riders, you know, all experienced guys in heat one, uh, you couldn't get the bike to slide. What was the, what was the track situation like from both the track walk and then when you actually went out on the bike? Yeah, when we did the... They obviously had a lot of rain, so there was a lot of moisture in the track. Um, coming into both corners, right on the racing line was like plasticine where the water had been sitting all day. And you can only do so much on these tracks, you know, especially with the greyhounds and that racing around um, Monmore Green. So they've got limited time to do things. Other tracks could could have the track curators could fix it if they had more time, obviously. So um, when we were, yeah, were kicking the dirt, it was just like plasticine. It was just super grippy. I thought it may be okay once you start racing. I have seen tracks bad in the past and you start racing. But um, anyway, all the fans are there. All the riders are there. We're all in their gear. So we thought we may as well give it a go. And we didn't get around the better corner. So I don't know what it would have been like if we got down to the bad corner. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's just, it's a safety thing, you know. You don't you don't really want to try and do a meeting and wait for someone to get hurt before you call it off. It's best to call it off early and before someone gets hurt. And I mean, Peter are a very experienced side, so um, yeah, they they if they knew that what's right from wrong and you know what's safe and unsafe, and you just yeah, it's not worth it. It's a long season and we're best off just going home in one piece and, and trying to get another time. Unfortunately for the fans that come and come out and, and uh, waste their night, 
they're not the only ones. We waste our night too. We waste a lot of money as well just to get there. So um, it's just it's speedway, mate. Safety's first. Well, of course, it was a big call for the referee to make to, to allow the meeting to start and then to admit defeat very early on. Chris Derno was the referee at Monmore on Monday night and he explained the decision. Yeah, there's been a lot of rain in the Midlands and it um, sat on the track around the bend, so it caused the inside of the track to be very soft. Uh, we looked it in the track walk. Uh, we thought we'd done enough to track work to recover it. Uh, but we were just a bit worried about the third bend. But when we started that first race there, the first bend was even as worse. So, you know, we had experienced riders just not able to turn. Uh, we've looked at all the options of what we could do in the time space. And we just think we just can't recover this track in the time space. So we've had to take the decision. We've got to call it off for rider safety. The track is just too grippy. Uh, it's just unfortunate with the weather circumstances, just not able to recover this in the time. So we've unfortunately had to call the meeting off now, I'm afraid. And, and you're one of the riders, obviously, you were out in that first heat. So you've had to clean your bike today and, and reset everything, even though you only went about 50 yards. Yeah, I could have done with a day off, to be honest. I haven't had a day off for a, a long time, a few weeks now. So uh, I could have done with that. But anyway, that's the way it goes. Part of the fun, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, I'm on to Birmingham for tomorrow. So I yeah, had to get the bike done today and start again um so that's going to get reorganized at some other point as far as wolves are concerned now obviously things are heading into a, a tough run of fixtures for wolves you've got sheffield away on thursday then you've got bellevue home and away and then a trip to ipswich and the premiership pairs thrown in there as well i mean it's probably your arguably your toughest run of fixtures um f- between now and and when the you get to the playoffs i would say in the league as far as the the league fixtures have come out with those teams in that order we beat Bellevue at their track, but obviously they've changed their team around a little bit, made it a lot stronger. So that's going to be even more tough. Um, and we won, yeah, won at Bellevue earlier. So, uh, yep, yeah, you're right. It's going to be tough. But if we want to win the league, we're going to beat these guys, and or you know, we're going to get some points and from from the away fixtures, especially, and definitely win our home ones. So that's what we're aiming on. We've got the team to do it. We're all on form, to be honest, and I think we've got a, a good team. Yeah, to 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 win. So, um, just keep see, treating every meeting like we have been, and enjoying it with with the boys we've got. And um, yeah, like you said, if we if we can get through that bunch of uh, fixtures and and score a heap of points on the uh, league table, then I'll be happy. And your next fixture, of course, on Thursday against um, Sheffield and Wolves. Really, Sheffield's bogey side going for three. Three wins against them this season, potentially this Thursday. We've been back there and they've come to us and we've done it pretty pretty comfortably, really. So um, hopefully we can keep going and um, have another another good run at, at Sheffield. Um, it's uh, Obviously, they, they, they're going to up their game knowing that we we like going to their place. And, uh, yeah, you know, like they've got a good side they showed that at the start they were unbeaten for so long and um it's going to be tough but like i said we, as long as we leave there with something then i'll be happy but we're definitely going for the win well on the subject of sheffield we can hear from craig cook now and he was speaking after sheffield's biggest win of the season so far a couple of weeks ago against bellevue and also reflecting on the start of the season which was maybe less than ideal and, and looking ahead to, to facing wolves how he fancies Sheffield's chances this time. I hope so. You know, I hope it isn't a flash in the pan. But you know, it, it is very frustrating for me because I work extremely hard yeah, on and off the track. And you know, we've uh, you know, there's, there's been a lot of sleepless nights lately. You know, just trying to figure out what's going on. So we went up back to basics, just changed a couple of things, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think the probably start was you know we, we we made some starts, a couple of starts up at Glasgow, and then we had a few issues. So we just kind of figured out what to do. Um, when they shoot, when issues come around and how, how to adjust the bike and tonight you know he's, the bike's been flawless and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy last week's been and gone and um, you know it, it was just one of them nights you know a few of us had issues you know I think me, Adam and, and Toby all scoring five points you know it's you, you, when we have three of us all having an off night like that you know it's not ideal so it just it was just one of them nights that's all forgotten about we'll move forward look forward and um, keep winning it doesn't matter who we're against 
Well, that's Craig Cook, and his performances are about to be reflected by Simon Stead in our next clip, because Simon Stead, um, reflecting on a strong performance most recently for Sheffield with that big home win at Ollerton the last time out. They're looking forward to keeping that momentum going on Thursday against Sam Masters' Wolves side, but he also has a bit to say about uh, the progression of Craig Cook this season, and he's captain as well. Kyle Howarth, here's Simon Stead. If we continue to ride like we are doing, then there's no reason why we can't get a result. Um, we're, we're positive, um, but we'll show Wolverhampton and, and Pete Adams as men the, the respect that they deserve because they're a very, very good outfit. Um, but we'd, uh, we'd like to get a little bit of revenge from, uh, from, their def- uh, from our defeat here. Just two separate side notes. First of all, uh, Craig Cook, his highest score in Sheffield Colours, looked back to his true self tonight. He really did. Uh, he's... I think what's happened with Craig so far this season is is just been a lack of track time here. Um, I think he's he's felt like he hasn't had a consistent run at it, and we've been working hard with him and uh, making changes to his machinery, to his setup. Uh, and I think again, going back to what I said before, that's testament to the hard work that he's putting in, uh, as well as the rest of the boys. But it's nice to see when when that hard work um, turns into points on track. Just finally for Kyle Herrith, he said he wanted a higher level of consistency. Uh, I think that's three paid double-figure scores on the trot now, so certainly st- stepping in the right direction. Uh, uh, Captain Fantastic, mate. He's just, you know what, Kyle brings more than just his points to, to the Sheffield team. He's, uh, he's an inspirational captain. Uh, and, um, and you know, it's nice to see him getting the points he deserves on track because he is a hard worker. Uh, he puts the effort in. Um, and, and he rides this place as good as anybody. So it's nice to see that he's turning uh, all his efforts into points. And um, let's hope he can continue that consistency that he's craving. So Sheffield hosting Wolves on Thursday night at Ollerton Stadium. Can Wolves make it three out of three? Or is Sheffield going to get their revenge? We'll find out and we'll have reaction to that on next week's episode of No Breaks, No Fear. Elsewhere in the Premiership, the match that was televised on Eurosport and Discovery Plus was Bellevue against Ipswich at the National Speedway Stadium. And the Aces took over at the top of the Premiership with a hard-fought 48-42 win over the Witches in a match that went down to a last-heat decider. Witches number one Jason Doyle was unbeaten from his first four rides. Matej Zagar and Captain Brady Kurtz were the heroes for the home side as they pulled off a 5-1. Zagar scoring 17 points from six rides. We'll hear from him in just a moment. Uh, missing out only to Jason Doyle in Heat 5 whilst Kurtz added 13 plus 1. Doyle's 13 for the Witches were backed up by Ben Barker with 10 plus 1 at reserve as the visitors took a league point. Um, strong Aussie performances in this fixture. We, we've, we've mentioned Brady Kurtz there, uh, but obviously Jason Doyle. Uh, we should mention Troy Batchelor as well, who's having a good season so far far for Ipswich. Uh, all experienced names in the Witches lineup, and they themselves, I know that they came off at the wrong end of the, the result against Bellevue, but they're having a, a good season so far in the Premiership, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it, it's, uh, you just named a couple of Grand, ex-Grand Prix, all Grand Prix riders that we doily. Um, the league is tough. We've got some good riders in here. Uh, you know, with having Zagar back, it's, it's, it's good for the sport in, in the UK. Um, but it just makes it harder when you versus Bellevue now. But, uh, uh, yeah, Doyley's Doyley. He can beat anyone. He's fast, one of the fastest riders in the league. And, and um, you know, they they showed that last night, obviously. Um, and, and Troy is an ex Grand Prix rider. He's not silly, so he knows his way around a lot of places. And yeah, they're two tough teams. We got just got beat by Switch at their place. Um, we could say unlucky, but not really. You know, we we had a good meeting and um, we were we pushed them and. Um. Yeah. So hopefully we can. We've got to go back deep switch yet, and hopefully we can pick up or win there next time. Um. But we got beat at home by deep switch. We were missing a couple of riders, which really hurt us. So uh, we're trying to make them points back. Well, as we mentioned, the star man for the Aces was Mate Zagar. He scored 17 points on the night and he was speaking after that meeting with Steve Brandon from Eurosport. It was a very hard meeting, obviously, because uh, we were missing Max. Jay was uh, coming back from injury. It was a pretty bad one. I told him before the meeting, I said, maybe you should uh, have a rest another week. But he said, nah, I'll ride it. So my fair play to him. Uh, he tried his best. Charles was uh, testing some uh, other engine. You know, it was just a mix of everything. Of course, we we tried best every meeting, but a uh, hard opponent came. 
they were on the gas and it was, you know, it came up to last heat. So it was no pleasure, you know, in the last heat. It's a great result for the team, but as a rider to put in a performance like that, it's good for you as well, isn't it? To know that that's in the locker when you need it. Exactly, just like you said, but, uh, you know, I came, uh, to be honest, I came to this team this year uh, with a plan. Uh, we didn't accomplish that a few years ago. Uh, it's just, I got sentimental feelings about this club and uh, riding in England gives me, gives me pleasure to ride the bike again, you know, sliding it and enjoying the ride, you know, so uh, for me personally, it's, uh, it's very good and positive to come back. I hope the uh, club is uh, satisfied as well and pleased. And, uh, you know, we, we try to do our best to get the good result in the end. There's Matej Zagar, then the star man on Monday night for the Bellevue Aces and firing them to the top of the Premiership as it stands. Our guest in this episode is the Wolves captain, Sam Masters. Um, Sam, for you, that signing by Bellevue of Matej Zagar and adding somebody like that to their team, does that turn them from being a decent side into potential title contenders now? Yeah, for sure. They were, they were nowhere near as strong as they are now by just making one change. Um, Zago, you know, one of the most experienced race, riders in Great Britain. Um, he knows his way around everywhere. Nothing phases him. So he's he, he's made their team a lot stronger. He's uh, on and off the track, I think, by the sounds of it. You know, I speak to some of the Bellevue boys, the Aussies in there, and they say he's a good guy to have in the team. So uh, he's helping Bellevue a lot. Um, so we're going to have to be on our game when we race against them for sure. Well, it was uh, nearly but not quite for Ipswich, who led most of that meeting. Don't let the scoreline fool you. It did come down to the very last heat. Let's hear from the Ipswich captain, Danny King, speaking with Steve Brandon from Eurosport. Danny King, it's very early in the season. That was only your sixth league match, but you are the kings of the last heat. Decides at the minute it didn't work out tonight. No, it didn't, but obviously we're, we're, we're pleased to take a point away. It's... Um, it's obviously frustrating when you're down to last heat deciders and uh, you're missing out, but to come away with RR and take a point from somewhere like Bellevue, you know, we can't be too disheartened. You mentioned that over the course of a season, if you could score in every match you ride in, particularly on the road, it does go a long way to getting you in that top four and in the playoff situations. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you've got to keep winning at home as well. And, um, you know, we've lost at home already, which is not great. But, um, I, you know, as a team, I feel like we're getting stronger every week. And, um, we're a team that's not 100% performing, but we're in the mix and, and we're at the top of the table or, or near the top of the table. So there's good signs in this team and I think we're going to all come good soon. You mentioned that. You, the team spirit's obviously there, but you as a captain, you're working very hard in the pits between races, talking to riders, helping with setup. And there's some young guys in that team tonight, particularly Daniel and Hume. Those guys haven't got a great deal of experience at this level. No, they haven't. And I'm trying my best, but it's obviously been a difficult time for me as well. And, um, you know, my confidence has been a bit shot, but I'm still trying to do what, what my captain's role is here should I say so um, you know look credit to everyone especially Daniel he rode his socks off tonight and he deserved a few more points than he scored but um, as you say we're working as a unit and I think that's why we're, why we're where we're at well next up for Ipswich it's a trip to Kings Lynn on Thursday night and of course the other Thursday fixture is Sheffield versus Wolves I just want to touch on um, a fixture from last week for Wolves you raced at the East of England arena against Peterborough but it was a big away win for Wolves a four pointer 50-40 the final score uh, Chris Harris getting an 18 point maximum for you though what's the difference in racing against this Peterborough team than the one last year factoring in that there's only one change or was Bjarne Pedersen the real difference last year is having raced against them what what for you maybe feels different I, I kind of said it before it's so hard to do to have two good seasons in a row um they're an experienced team and it's I don't really know exactly why they're just all not firing at the same time obviously Bomber was firing the other day he just needs to get the other boys behind him but let's hope they don't um makes life easy for us if they are struggling but um, yeah, I can't put my finger on it. It's, like I said before, it's hard to do have two awesome seasons like they did. Um, they were rightly the the best team last season, and obviously not this season. So, uh, but that they, they they you know that they can do it. So it's going to be interesting to see what they end up like at the end of the year. Hopefully, they start beating people and taking points off them at home. It makes life a little bit better for us that we won there already. So, um, yeah. See what happens. Well, it was a defeat for the Peterborough Panthers, but a great night for Chris Harris, who got his first 18-point maximum in uh, quite some time. He's been reflecting on that max with Dave Rowe. Well, it's been a long while since I've probably done it, but uh, yeah, it was nice tonight. Uh, making good starts for me. Um, 
and felt good on the bike. But the new engine feels fast, so uh, yeah, it was, um, it was a nice to have a good meeting here this year. And you've actually had quite a tough week, haven't you? So was it the engine that made all the difference? Yeah, we, we, um, we've been struggling for speed here and everything, and uh, uh, luckily uh, my, my sponsor bought me a new one. And, uh, yeah, it's flying, so, uh, yeah, can't thank Sean enough for that. And like you say, making fast starts, which we don't often see, but we saw you race from the back a couple of times early on, but then you were just in that first bend superbly. Yeah, no, we um, just found something at the minute, I think, that suits how I want it to work at the start, so, you know, we'll try to remember what that is and keep it going for the rest of the season. It's hard to ask you when you scored 18 and the team have lost at home by 10 points, so that obviously means something went wrong elsewhere, but why, why can this team quite not quite click like they did last year? I don't know, you know, I think a lot of the riders are probably struggling with engines. Um, like I say, we, we were struggling for a bit of speed, really, from, what, from last year. Uh, the track's pretty much the same, but for some reason it's not working for us at the minute. So for one reason or another, we, we'll, have to, we'll all have to keep pushing. You know, I'm, you know, I've done good tonight, but one good meeting, it doesn't change anything. So we've still got to keep pushing myself. Yeah, you know that Bomber's going to give his all whatever tournament he's in. Um, Chris Harris... Probably going to be in action, you would think, for Peterborough in the Premiership pairs next week. I just want to touch on that, Sam Masters, because we had the first round a couple of weeks ago at Peterborough. The next one is coming up next week at Ipswich. Uh, Foxhall will be the venue. Of course, there's a round happening at each of the Premiership tracks, so Ipswich is next. And for you, Sam, a track that uh, you go well round because a couple of weeks ago, if not even a couple of weeks ago, you scored 16 points racing against the Witches with uh, with Wolves. So it's a circuit you go well around. But tell us about about the tournament in general how you think it's working so far because you get to put yourself up against the, the very best it's basically a, a meeting full of heat 13s and 15s isn't it yeah we did the first round at peterborough and we did okay to be honest we had a bit of bad luck with dougie having an engine failure which stopped us from getting into the semis but we were just as quick as any other team but uh now we yeah go to ipswich i think it's a quite a cool thing that we get an extra few, few meetings um yeah it's good for the sport that you can every track get a go at it as well not just at one place so um yeah i enjoy it it's good that yeah we've got, got more race meetings throughout the year and uh, it'd be nice to uh, finish on top step i think that we are able to do it we've got some guys that are good at, mo- at every track in the in the uk so we're going for the win that's for sure and and your home round still to come as well later in the year so you, you can look forward to that that home advantage at monmore yeah that'd be nice uh we can yeah get the win there, especially in front of their home fans. Um, I don't know. I think they might. We we aren't the last round or anything, but it'd be cool if we could win it at at one more overall. But yeah, long way to go yet. Yeah, you can be the winner on the night. Of course, that gets you the maximum points. The points roll over. The final round will be at the National Speedway Stadium in September, but there's still rounds to come. We've had the Peterborough round, but uh, Ipswich next, and then it's going to be Kings Lynn, Wolves, Sheffield, and then uh, Bellevue uh, to round things off in the Premiership pairs. And that rounds off our Premiership section here on No Breaks, No Fear. Next, turning our attention to the Championship, and, uh, well, it was a busy weekend for Sam Masters' uh, Edinburgh Monarchs. Now, Sam himself wasn't involved in both fixtures, but uh, the Monarchs raced home and away against the Glasgow Tigers. And, uh, well, it was the Monarchs who sealed it with just two points to spare. What a meeting. We'll talk all about that and uh, go uh, right the way through the uh, championship uh, in just a few moments' time here on No Breaks, No Fear. Wells Fargo presents one of the surest ways to grow your money. A Wells Fargo CD account, where you can earn a 5.00% annual percentage yield on an 11-month term with a minimum opening deposit of $5,000. Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash CD rates to open a CD account and start growing your savings with us. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. No brakes, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Welcome back. I'm Ian Brannan. My special guest this week is Sam Masters, captain of the Wolverhampton Wolves in the Premiership, but in the Championship, captain of the Edinburgh Monarchs. And he's been a long-serving captain as well for the Monarchs. And uh, it was a big weekend this last weekend for the Edinburgh Monarchs because in the Knockout Cup, it was Edinburgh versus Glasgow, home and away. And Edinburgh managed to build up a 16-point lead at Armadale to take back to Ashfield. And, uh, well, it was a very 
close run thing. But um, Sam, ultimately, you managed to seal it. And I, th- I know, obviously, that Edinburgh versus Glasgow is one of the big fixtures in British Speedway as a whole. But especially with the added drama of a cup competition and the added drama of a victory by two points, it was uh, it was a matchup that had it all. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was sad that I couldn't make both legs. Uh, unfortunately, there was clashes in, in, in Poland and uh, FIM rules say that I've got to be in, in Poland, unfortunately, for for Edinburgh. But I'd, the first league was on the Friday and myself and Josh done our bit, I think. I uh, I got a 15-point maximum and he only dropped one. So um, I think we done as much as we could, knowing that we couldn't be there the next day. And uh, Edinburgh chose two good guests so in Sedgy and, and, and Richard Lawson. So um, they went there and done the job for us. Thank God we were following the the scores after our meeting in Poland the other day and yeah we we're, were cheering pretty hard in the in the in the high car so uh <laughs> yeah through the next round uh it was nice to knock uh Glasgow out obviously being the Edinburgh rivals and um look forward to the next round and and down to those two points and and heat 14's become a talking point Brock Nickel was on a paid max um Danian Hube was scheduled to take his ride he'd run a last in his previous ride he went in and took his scheduled ride in Heat 14. A lot of people saying that they should have put Brock Nickel in there, someone who's on that that paid max. Um, of course, it didn't happen that way. Danny and Hume came in last, and obviously there's many examples of where the meeting could change, but that at that stage in the meeting is certainly one of them, isn't it? Yeah, well, Cammy Rand might have made a bit of a mistake there. Fortunate for us. Uh, but then again, you know, Brock may have went in that race and not scored any points either, so... Um... At Speedway, you never really know, but um, yeah, you would put a, probably put the guy that's on a maximum in that race for sure. So <laughs> it was probably a mistake, but anyway, thank, that that worked for us. Um, yeah, we'll take that. So the thoughts there of the victorious Edinburgh captain. What about his opposite number? Ulrich Ostergaard, the Glasgow Tigers captain, he's been reflecting on that uh, double matchup and knockout cup loss for Glasgow with Ryan Guest. Well, Ulrich, um, Glasgow, Edinburgh, it's always a, a fierce derby, certainly always plenty of drama, so it turned out the, uh, that way the weekend as well. Yeah, definitely did. Uh, obviously, the result didn't go our way, so that was a bit disappointing. Uh, we were there early in the year and uh, I think we won by 10 or 12 points, so... Uh, yeah, everyone was actually up for it on Friday, but for some reason, yeah, we just didn't do it. The team just didn't click on Friday, and we lost by 16 points. So it's a bit of a bit of a hole to pull back on the Saturday meeting, and uh, we got really close, but didn't do it in the end. So that was a bit uh, bit bad. But uh, yeah, derby meetings are always good and always uh, fun to be part of. Yeah, Sam Masters and Josh Pickering for for Edinburgh probably are two of the most informed riders in British Speedway right now and their performance at at Armadale on Friday showed but uh, going into the the second leg knowing Edinburgh were were missing those two because of uh, commitments in Poland you you, you must have felt like you did have a chance back at home Well I think even with I mean we we still felt we would have a chance Uh, Sam always last time he was really good around our place of course but Cook is good around our place as well Um, so it's the rest of us so we, we all knew on a good day we, we could still pull it back uh, obviously it would be hard um, but even with the guest they had uh, we knew it would be hard but it was it was close in the end and uh, you know Cookie had three engine failures which he normally never has and uh, without them we would have you know gone through pretty easy actually and uh, yeah just one of them nights and obviously for the Glasgow fans and obviously for, for our team it's a bit disappointing not to go through uh, obviously Derby ones we always want to win but uh, even more, we we want to progress to the semi final and uh, potentially four more meetings. So um, yeah, it was a it was a big blow for us. But uh, yeah, we have to look forward to the rest of the season and uh, try uh, hit that top spot and uh, get into the playoffs. Yeah, looking at uh, at social media and everything after after the meeting, it looks as though one of the uh, the, the biggest talking points from from the two legs was uh, Heat 14 at Glasgow in the second leg. Um, Brock Nickel was on a paid maximum at that point. Daniel Hume had opened with two wins, then had a, a last place. A lot of Glasgow fans asking why Brock Nickel maybe wasn't brought in as a, a reserve switch, but c- can you understand the, the difficult decision that team manager Cammy Brown had in that one? 
Of course, it's always hard when you're a team and you're in what to do and what not to do. And to be fair, at, at that point, I didn't actually know Brock had a maximum. I know we just had a 5-1 and he 12. Um, but I didn't actually know he was on a maximum. Um, so... Yeah, I was a bit busy after heat 12 to get ready for heat 15 if I was in it anyway. So I didn't actually see what was going on. Uh, obviously, looking back, maybe it would have been the right decision to put Brock in. He was he was skating well. Um, but Daniel looked absolutely brilliant in his first two. Um, and yeah, obviously got a zero. Didn't see what happened there. And uh, so whether Cameron would just give him another chance or, or forgot to put Brock in or whatever, I, I got no idea. But I did read about it as well. And yeah maybe it would have been the right choice to do it but they speed when you never look back and you, you never know what's, what would have happened do you but uh, I think if the rest of us would have pulled our finger out and uh, yeah it wouldn't even have been an issue anyway would it <laughs> yeah just finally like you say attention's turned back to, to the Championship League itself now um, home away and home meetings to, to scunt up and, and a chance to, to, to bounce back and, and show what you are made of yeah exactly uh, we all like scunt up uh, it's a great place it's a proper racetrack as well it's pretty, pretty fair for everyone um but again, they're good at home, so it's, it's another it's another hard one. There's no easy meetings this year, to be fair. And uh, yeah, we all have to put a, a big, big effort in to go and win the meetings. Uh, but we're definitely looking for a way win on Friday. Uh, definitely want to win again at home on, on Sunday. And uh, can we get some points out of that weekend as well? It's uh, getting closer to the playoffs. I know Leicester look pretty good out in front at the minute. Uh, but there's still a top two to play for. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get there in the end. And uh, yeah, it's that when the Madison anyway. Glasgow captain Ulrich Ostergaard reflecting on that defeat to Edinburgh in the Knockout Cup. So Knockout Cup is uh, off the agenda for Glasgow for this season. So all eyes for now on the league and uh, keeping up the top there and and, and fighting for the uh, top two positions, of course, that guarantee you into the semi-finals. Next for Glasgow will be Scunthorpe away on Friday and home on Sunday back at Ashfield. Um, as for Edinburgh, well, Sam, you've got a busy few days in store, what with everything, because of course you're racing for Wolves as well, but for Edinburgh, um, next up you've got Birmingham on Wednesday, Newcastle on Friday, and then um, lying in your way are Oxford and Scunthorpe to come. Um, how important is this period for the Monarchs, racing against the sides around you in the league who are also bidding to get in the playoffs? Well, I don't really follow it, to be honest. Uh, oh, I just get told towards the end what we need to do. And, and, but anyway, we've, uh, it'd be nice to have yeah, a few run of fi- home fixtures, get a bit of momentum going. Uh, we had a good... Well, we got some points on the road last week, uh, Plymouth and um, Poole we were at. So, uh, yeah, we... I don't know. We, we've got to get to the playoffs. That's our aim for sure. Um, we've definitely, you know... We probably we haven't got the most experienced side. Myself and, and Josh are really the only ones that have been everywhere a lot. Kai is our third heat leader doing a good job, but again he hasn't seen tracks too too much. So um yeah, we're aiming on making the playoffs for sure. That's the aim. And then anything can happen from there. So we are yeah, picking up points in the in the next this spirit busy spell is is crucial for us. Um Hopefully we can get something from tomorrow at Birmingham, hopefully a win, and then a win on Friday against Newcastle. That's that's the plan. Oh yeah, a couple of it's certainly a big away win would, would help narrow the gap, wouldn't it? And and obviously Birmingham will have alternative thoughts on that because they themselves are trying to catch everyone as well. So it's certainly for Birmingham, I think it's a it's a must win for them on Wednesday and probably not far off a must win for Edinburgh to, to catch the playoffs at this stage. That's right, yeah. Everything's must win really. Um yeah, I aim on Edinburgh. I focus on what Edinburgh need to do, and that's my job to do my best. Um, so yeah, we can get a win for tomorrow. That keeps Birmingham on the back foot, gives us some points, and we can focus on keep moving up the table. Poole taking on Leicester as well on Wednesday night, which of course at the top of the table. That's uh, I mean that is a meeting of the two big guns there at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably the two strongest teams in the league. Really, like they're a fair way above everyone. So. Uh, be interesting to see what happens there. Um, but you you rode against um, Pool recently with Edinburgh. Yeah, we nearly we nearly we nearly got a point from there to be honest. And I think Pool have all, almost got a Premiership team there, so it was it's always tough. And we almost got a point, so it'll be interesting to see how other teams go against them, especially Leicester. 
Well, on the subject of Leicester, they went five points clear at the top of the championship after a 49-41 win at Berwick on Saturday. It was the Lions' third maximum haul in their last three away matches, whilst the Bandits' playoff hopes were hit by a third successive home defeat. The home side could have rescued a draw with a 5-1 in Heat 15, but in fact it was the Lions who took the 5-1 with the extra league points uh, after Chris Harris was disqualified for a clash with Nick Morris. Uh, Kyle Howarth scoring 13 plus 1 for Leicester with the guest Jason Edwards notching 11 plus 2 and Morris scoring 11 plus 1 and Leon Flint scoring 13 along with Chris Harris on 12 plus 1 dominating the home side scoring. Speaking then after that Leon Flint uh, pulling no punches about how things are going for Berwick at the moment. He's been speaking to Ryan Guest. Well, Leon Saturday night it was a, another tough night for the Bandits at home to Leicester a third straight uh, home defeat and it's been a like I say a, a tough few weeks now for the team. Yeah it's really not good enough um Hopefully we can bounce back and um, uh, get that get a win over Red Car. Um, you know we're more than capable to to fill that deficit of twelve points. Um, but yeah, I think hopefully the boys have shook this bad form out and um, yeah, hopefully we can come back stronger. Yeah, obviously you'll have all been discussing it, all been talking. Can can you put your finger on where it's gone wrong in the last few weeks at all? Just simply people not pulling the weight. Um, I think everyone bar bar bomber, you know, has has been real really struggling. Um and like we say, it's just not good enough. It's not it's it's not good uh for the club, um it's not good for the fans. I can't really remember the last time Berwick went three straight matches um um in defeat, so I'd hate for it hate for it to make it make it four, but yeah, gonna come back positive and um yeah, hopefully we can uh get kick started get more more points at home and uh, certainly rack up some points away and make them playoffs How much of a loss has uh, Joy Etheridge been to the team? Yeah I think well it's pretty simple the results have, have shown that um, he's a big miss um, hopefully he comes back to where he left off um, but yeah I think we should we should be comfortable enough at home with how the boys can ride Berwick um, without him um, but yeah, the, if you look at the RR rides for him, it's been maximum six points of that. And Jai's only really been beaten once, once round Berwick off uh, an opponent. One of the times he got uh, excluded, and the other time he, he just simply got beaten. Uh, I think that 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 speaks levels. Um, but yeah, like I say, hopefully, hopefully we can all uh, get we get all the stuff sorted, and um, yeah come back with a win from your own perspective since you, you did make your comeback from injury after just over a, a month on the sidelines two positive performances at Shearfield Park for yourself with two double figure scores yeah um, first one was at Red Car literally felt like it was my first time riding a bike again um, but it wasn't so bad um, and uh, yeah double figures at Berwick two heat 15s um, but yeah I kind of expect more, more of myself there um, but yeah you can be scoring as many points as you want if it, if the team loses um, you know there's nothing to really be positive about it, there's always half a downer in the in the in the team so yeah like I say once we get winning uh, everyone can can be a bit more prouder and uh, I enjoy it a bit more yeah and just finally obviously it was a bit of a more complicated injury than it, than it first seemed as well but, but no ill effects all, all feeling okay now Um I'm managing fine with my speedway. Um, it's everything else that I'm struggling with. Um, very restricted on what I can and can't do. Um, looking, I just got a letter back, letter back the other day saying that it's uh, it's worse than what they think. So hopefully I can just make it out to the end of the season, and then I think I'm planned like the last last meeting of the season, the week after I'm set to go and have a, an operation on it, and. Um, get everything put back and where it's meant to be and it's a fair, fairly long recovery um, from there so hopefully I'll be fit and strong ready to go in March um, but yeah just just hopefully make that make the whole season through and then uh, we'll see we'll see where we end up we wish you all the best for the rest of the season Leon cheers boss thank you there's Leon Flint of course a teammate of yours at Wolves but um, certainly not mincing his words not good enough as far as Berwick go at the moment um, throughout the the core of the team obviously um, Bomber has, has been an ever 
ever present and ever consistent performer, I think, pretty much. But that that home form for Berwick, similar to Edinburgh, I suppose, it's something that they're known for. It's it's a track that usually teams tend to struggle at, and, and Berwick's strength comes at home. But they're really um, not finding that at the moment. Yeah, they. It's it's always hard to go to Berwick. So for t- teams to go there and get wins, it's it is unusual. They've got a strong teams too, especially for at Berwick. Um, but uh, yeah, they're getting injuries. It's not really unusual for racing a Berwick track, to be honest. <laughs> it gets a little bit hairy at times. But uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, no more injuries for them, to be honest. Um, as Leon is one of my teammates in, in, at Wolverhampton. And, um, yeah, injuries aren't good. Scunthorpe, another team currently around Edinburgh in the league in that same quest for the playoffs. Um, they had a big win against Redcar last weekend. Ryan Douglas spearheading their uh, crusade, another of your teammates at, at Wolves, of course. Uh, 46 rides, 26 wins for Dougie in the league. Um, only failed to score in two heats this season. Um I mean, he's really been along with yourself uh, with with Edinburgh. He's you know one of the standout riders in in the championship, certainly. Yeah, he's a teammate of mine. I was with him today, hanging out. We actually play soccer with each other later on this afternoon. So yeah, he's having a good season. Um, he likes riding for Scunthorpe. He likes the track there. Obviously, that's why he's scoring all the points. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how we go against each other when we come up come up against each other. Um, we always have good races, so um, hopefully we can keep it that way. OK, well, it's uh, the latest instalment of Ryan on Ryan. As uh, Ryan Guest chats to Ryan Douglas, uh, here he is. Well, Ryan Douglas, uh, looking back at, uh, at last Friday, it was another entertaining meeting at the Eddie Wright Raceway. Um, a big performance from yourself, just dropping the one point and a, a big ride in Heat 15 as well. Yeah, we always know it's going to be tough. Red cars are pretty similar track, so they always go well at Scunthorpe and we usually do pretty well there. So I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but um, yeah, I managed to have a good meeting myself. I only dropped the one, which I was probably annoyed about because I got passed and uh, yeah, I probably rode the wrong place at the wrong time. But um, yeah, I managed to have a good ride in 15 and, and secure the points. So um, yeah, I'm happy with that, definitely. Yeah, like you say, it was a match-winning ride in Heat 15 as well. Just talk us through because it sounded like it was quite a hard graph from yourself in that one. Yeah, well, I had gate one and, and missed the start. So I was at the back in lap one and uh, yeah, I just managed to, to kind of split them going into the over into lap two and um, yeah come out in front down the back straight on lap two so after that just tried to put my head down and, and get the win and lucky enough I had enough speed, speed to do that yeah to, to be able to, to win is one thing to, to do it in, in such dramatic style is, is another because um, it's been quite a, a mixed bag of results for the Scorpions so far this year yeah that's it we obviously got a team that goes well at Scunthorpe and we can't afford to, to lose many many points there because we haven't been that strong on, on, away from home so um, we, we pride ourselves in winning all the home matches and and, yeah, we need to continue to do that, and uh, I think it's a, it was a good confidence booster to get one over Red Car because obviously I said they're they're a good side. So now we build on that, and hopefully we can can keep that form. Yeah, a, a tough couple of tests coming up though. Uh, Glasgow next up, so um, everyone knows knows how strong they are. One of the the powerhouses at this level. Yeah, that's it. They're not going to be easy, and I think we're at Glasgow on Sunday as well, which is going to be tough. So we we'll look to get all the points Friday and uh, see if we can pick up something away Sunday. Yeah, just finally from a, a personal note uh, yourself obviously you had that uh, that, that injury that, that kept you out um, uh, a month or so ago now I think it was um, I know Dave Pete said after the meeting on Friday as well it, it finally looked as though you were, you were feeling proper comfortable back on the bike it, it has taken a, a few weeks to get to that stage I'm guessing yeah it did it, uh, I was, was, had that crash and pollen and my neck was real stiff and then that kind of come good after a week and all of a sudden my shoulder was no good and uh, yeah I thought I'd be okay for a few meetings and I was riding not very comfortable and, and was wasn't enjoying it. It was, it was hard to hang on, and, and it's hard to ride a speedway bike. Then they're not the easiest thing to ride at the best of times. So, but over the last week, it's got better. And the last, uh, I think, meeting here, and then I went to Poland. And it was okay, and, and Scunthorpe. So I think I'm back to pretty much fitness now, and can just keep building that confidence again. Yeah, Ryan Douglas, very much one of the four men in the league. 46 rides, 26 wins, 15 seconds. Only failed to score in two heats this season. Uh, there's only two other riders in the championship that can match those stats and one rider who can better them. Sam Masters, do you know who, who any of them might be? I wouldn't have a clue, mate. Well, you're, <laughs> you're, 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 you're one of them. Oh, right. Me, yeah, right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't follow it. I, I honestly don't follow scores and that too quickly. I yeah. tend to just try 
try and focus on what job I've got to do with myself, my teams. I suppose when you're racing, though, you 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 know you're going from heat to heat to heat, and probably not really studying the program or the or the form so much. So I suppose the meetings can run away with you. As we heard from Ulrich Ostergaard earlier, he didn't realise that, uh, that that Brock Nickel was on a paid max, and and you know, I suppose why would you if you're not looking at the program? You've got other stuff to do. I'm a captain, so I've got to try and help them as best I can. But you still got to try and focus on your own thing to do. But uh, yeah, it's. I, I just try and yeah, concentrate on my job at hand and um, not really worry about other teams and other other riders too too much. I just try and win every single race. But but who's the other team, who's the other person that hasn't lost more than less than two races? Uh yeah. Well, it was Dougie, yourself, and Scott Nichols, and the rider who can better that, who's I think only failed to score once this season, is Charles Wright. So uh, there you go. There you go. And on the subject of Scott Nichols, next we're going to turn our attention to the Speedway Grand Prix series because, as you know, Scott is uh, one of the faces of uh, Grand Prix coverage on Discovery Plus and Eurosport, uh, certainly in the UK, um, doing his interviews in the pits and uh, has had a great insight into how the New Look Grand Prix series is working. So we're going to have a chat with Scott Nichols all about the Speedway Grand Prix series in the next part of No Breaks, No Fear. No brakes, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Welcome back. I'm Ian Brannan. My special guest this week is the Wolves and Edinburgh captain, Sam Masters. And uh, Sam has also had some experience of racing in the Speedway Grand Prix series on occasion as well. You've had a a few wild cards. Um, Have you been keeping up to date with the latest instalments of of the Grand Prix series and uh, get to follow it whenever you're not racing? Yeah, look, I follow... Yeah, Max Doyley, Jack, being the Aussies, follow their scores. Uh, Freddie, I rode with him at Wolves, so I always hope to, hope to see him doing pretty good. Uh, I I missed the last round. Oh, watching a couple of heats here and there the other day, but it was a little bit hard because we were racing in Poland that day. Um, but yeah, it's tough at that level. They're all they're all winning and losing, so um, it's good to watch. Oh, actually, I I, I like watching Buley to be honest. He's mm. he's an awesome little rider, and. Uh, his attitude's cool. So, um, yeah, I'll try and follow them guys. Hopefully they do good. But, um, yeah, again, don't really follow the stats too often. Um, but I do enjoy watching a, a Grand Prix if I'm able to. Yeah, it's it's been a great um, start to the series and particularly a good start for the Brits as well with uh, Robert Lambert getting through to his first final. Dan Bewley just missing out. Woofy seems to be on the up as well. So let's find out what the series is like so far from the point of view of Scott Nichols, who of course is one of the new faces of the Grand Prix coverage on TV, is travelling the world and speaking to the biggest stars on the Grand Prix stage in the pits for Discovery and Eurosport. And um, Scotty has been chatting with Ryan Guest about his international travels. Well, Scotty, the Speedway Grand Prix, obviously, on uh, on TV screens and broadcast this year has got a, um, a new look, a, a new feel about it. You're still involved in a, a different capacity, actually, going out to each round. Uh, how are you finding it from uh, from your own personal perspective? Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's... Um Certainly a different role. Um, asking the questions, it's a bit strange sometimes. Asking a question that you already know the answer to and you think, oh man, am I really asking that simple question? But it's about trying to ask questions that you hope that the viewers find interesting and you've got to try and tick a lot of boxes. Um, you've got to try and keep it simple but not too simple. So, um, But no, I'm enjoying it. Um, I think hopefully the riders kind of appreciate that I've been there as well so I know the pressures they're under and I think sometimes that's where hopefully I can gauge when and what to ask I probably will make a couple of mistakes along the way but no it's a fun role I'm enjoying it it's um, definitely a, a massively new look I think you know the, the pits and the image of it looks really cool I think they've put a lot of money into it they're making it look much more the word a lot of people seem to be saying is slick it's, the show seems to run really well and looks good so um, yeah I think they're learning too um, Speedway's a very unique sport and I think they've found that out but each round it seems to behind the scenes is getting better and people are feeling more comfortable with their roles and stuff like that so uh yeah i'm enjoying it let's look at the the series so far as well uh, starting with the the british boys one by one if we can and um ty woffington the, the the last two rounds in particular have been a lot more like the, the ty woffington we're used to and certainly a, a step back in the right direction yeah definitely i think um you know ty's changed engine tuners so you know and, and then last couple of rounds have been better so there, there has to be something in that I think you know he's with you know the engine tuner or was with the engine tuner's tuning the, the 
kind of looks to be the world champion and was a form, you know, he tuned Artem's engine. But, you know, sometimes those ways suit everybody and you get a little bit stale and stagnant and need that new challenge. And, you know, Ty stepped up. Um, you know, he, he's ultra relaxed. You know, I think the Ty we're seeing at the minute, I'm, I'm kind of trying to put my finger on what it is that's changed, is it? He's, you know, he's got his kids, he's grown up and he's a little bit more mature and he feels a bit more at ease and a bit more relaxed and as more prepared to do the interviews and have a chat and things like that or is it mean that he still wants to be world champion but the desire is not quite like it was and he's enjoying the ride I don't know um, but nonetheless his form has been much better and it's great for him and obviously great for British Speedway and the British fans Yeah it is indeed uh, talking of it from that point of view Robert Lambert great to see him reach his uh, first final in Germany as well fully deserved and certainly seems to be building on the, the previous experiences that he's gained as well yeah, definitely. I mean, it was a track um, that would suit Robert. You know, he's he's a strong rider. He's he's got great control of the bike, and and he can revel in those conditions. And it showed, you know. And I, I'm really pleased that he made his first final. I think um, it was weird. Sort of one of the questions I kind of was toying with asking him, or or even Jason, because he's in a camp, is like again, probably knew that. What's it going to take for him to make a final? And and you know, it's not really anything. It's just actually doing it and that happening um so i'll be interested to see what it does to his confidence and, and stuff like that now he's a very confident lad but um sometimes you actually need the proof in the pudding to kind of install that belief so um yeah i think going on to Gorjov, i think he'll go there in a lot more confident or have more of a belief in himself and hopefully have another good night yeah, uh, one Brit still waiting to make that first final, Dan Bewley, but nevertheless, um, he's made a, a couple of semi-finals uh, in the space of a couple of rounds now. Um, was second high scorer in the in the main standings on on Saturday night as well, and um, really seems to be settling into into his surroundings now. <laughs> he could settle into anything, any. You? you could put him on the front line in World War Three, and he would still not be phased. He's just um, takes it in his stride, and you have to love that about him. And um, yeah, he's, he's doing brilliant. I mean, geez, we started Speedway at 16, 2015, I think it was, he said. And, you know, 2022, he's already a Speedway Nations gold medal winner and he's in the Grand Prix and, and on the cusp of making his first final. It will happen. He's, he's certainly got the skills, he's got the speed and he's got the attitude and the temperament for it. So, um, yeah, he's a breath of fresh air to it, how kind of just laid back and I think he's just still soaking it all up and enjoying it, I think, I'd like to know. It's almost like I don't think he really can believe it at the moment. I think he's just, everything's happened so fast that I don't think he's actually had time to prepare properly. And it's almost like he's a bit like some of the old school Americans where they just, everything is fun and laid back. And if they take it serious, it's not the same. So, um, yeah, I, you would definitely see him on the podium before the season's out. Yeah, and just finally, um, Bartosz Marshlik, everyone expected him to, to run away with uh, this year's series, the way it all uh, shaped up in the end. He hasn't really done anything overly spectacular as a, as a whole, but nevertheless still got a, a comfortable enough lead at the moment. He has, you know, it's um, kind of for the fans' perspective and the viewing perspective, I hope this isn't that he's stealing the march now and runs away with it, 11-point lead. Hopefully um, he has an off night. Can't see it in Gorge off his home track, but hopefully he has an off night and, and the other boys can kind of reel in and, and um, keep it closer. I mean, he's 100% the favourite to win it. He was at the start of the season without Artem and Emil. Um, but no, he's just been consistent, hasn't he? Gone about his business and, and done what he has to do. Like I said, I think now if he starts to gain that momentum, it's going to be really, really hard. You know, it's kind of almost going to be a, a battle for silver. So there's Scott Nichols and his assessment of how the Grand Prix series is looking so far. And when we look towards the Grand Prix for next year, the qualifiers are happening already. Some have already happened this week, as we know. That's why uh, people like Max Frick were, were absent from their meetings at the start of the week. There's more qualifiers this coming weekend. The Grand Prix race-off, the, the challenge, uh, which will decide who automatically goes through. I think you've got to finish in the top three or four, haven't you, to, to qualify for that. Um, it's going to be held at Glasgow this year in August. It's the week after the British Grand Prix. Glasgow will be the venue, and some of the best riders in the world will be there trying to secure their place in the Grand Prix series. And for any rider who's racing in Britain, any any rider who's based at Glasgow, um, who manages to get through to that uh, that Grand Prix challenge. I mean, this has got to be a great opportunity for some of the British-based riders, not necessarily British riders, but the British-based riders to have that advantage of, of having a bit of uh, home track knowledge, perhaps, or certainly track that they're very familiar with. 
I wish I had the opportunity to go in at Mangus. I scored an eighteen point maximum at Glasgow not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> How does it work for, for for the Aussies getting in it? Because obviously the British Speedway guys get filtered in, in in one way or another. But what what's your process to get into the GP? It used to be like go through off the Aussie title results and and then and go yeah off the top four or top three or whatever it was. But this year was. Uh, bit of a popularity contest i think and the people chose their mates to go in so i missed out yeah. unfortunately <laughs> but you've, you've you've had some gp experience and that's something you'd like to to do again i assume yeah of course i do i mean i've like you said we spoke earlier i had the highest average in the uk this season and i thought that yeah maybe i didn't do quite as good in the australian championship last time but um that was like two years ago or over two years ago that so um I've had the GP experience, and I'd love to try and make it to there. But yeah, I'm not. If I ain't getting put in the GP qualification rounds, then I ain't got any chance of getting in, really, do I? Looking at the Grand Prix series, though, um, obviously the next round is going to be the 25th of June at Gorjov, and then um, there's a bit of a month off because we've got Speedway of Nations and stuff. But then Cardiff will be on the calendar. But it's all going to end up. At Oceana, the Australian round is back on the calendar. There's a date of the 5th of November, but it must be great for uh, for Australians everywhere, but of course Aussie Speedway riders, to, to have a Grand Prix round back on your home turf. Yeah, it'd be nice to see if we go back to Australia, the, where, Australia was inve- uh, where Speedway was invented. Um, I don't know either. I don't know anything about it. I haven't, I don't, haven't heard anything about the Australian... Grand Prix, but uh, yeah, it would be cool. I wouldn't even have a clue where they're even going to put it. But uh, the Melbourne GP was always quite good, but maybe the stadium was just a little bit too big for the fans that they were getting. So um, yeah, be interesting to see where that ends up, and uh, be cool for the sport in Australia. That place in um, in New Zealand was was always pretty cool where they where they had it, and it, it sort of looked like the backdrop of uh, of the Hobbit or something like that with a racetrack in front of it. I forget where it was, but that was a cool place. Was it Auckland? Yeah. Yeah, that was in Auckland somewhere. Um, that was a cool, cool little venue. That um, looked like good racing as well. But yeah, I never got to see that one. But uh, yeah, see where it could even end up in New Zealand yet. I don't know yeah. how, how that how it works. But we'll have to wait and see. In the fullness of time. Well, look, have a, a good week this week. It's a busy one for you. Um, of course, with all those fixtures with with Wolves, Edinburgh, and then Poland in the weekend as well. Or are you yeah, staying? yeah, Poland, Poland on Sunday. So uh, yeah, busy. It's been busy times to me in the last couple of weeks, so uh, it'd be nice to have a day off. Um, but, yeah, I'll have to wait for another couple of weeks before I can have that. Okay, well, just ride safe. That's the main thing, and uh, thanks yeah. thanks for joining us. No problem. Thanks once again to my guest, Sam Masters. Before we go, let's have a look at the fixtures for the rest of the week ahead. And on Wednesday, Sam is in action at Perry Bar, where the Birmingham Brummies take on the Edinburgh Monarchs, as we mentioned earlier. A lot riding on that one and uh, a must win for both sides. And you can watch that one live wherever you are in the world on the British Speedway Network. Watch britishspeedway.co.uk if you'd like to sign up to the live stream of that one from Perry Bar. Starts at 7 o'clock 7.30 tapes up. Meanwhile at Sandy Lane it's Oxford Cheaters back at home once again against the Newcastle Diamonds and the Pool Pirates taking on the Leicester Lions again you can get the live stream from Pool's own website for that one but a big one at the top of the table. On Thursday it's back to Premiership action Kings Lynn hosting the Ipswich Witches and Sheffield Tigers hosting the Wolverhampton Wolves Can Wolves make it three defeats of Sheffield? The Tigers will be hoping to put that right. Friday, it's the Edinburgh Monarchs against the Newcastle Diamonds, Red Car Bears against the Oxford Cheaters, and the Scunthorpe Scorpions versus the Glasgow Tigers. Uh, Looking ahead to Saturday, we've got action at Shieldfield Park, Berwick Bandits against the Red Car Bears, Leicester Lions taking on the Plymouth Gladiators, followed by the National League fixture between the Cubs and the Centurions. On Sunday... Newcastle Diamonds against the Leicester Lions, another fixture which will be live streamed on the British Speedway Network, and the Glasgow Tigers versus the Scunthorpe Scorpions also happening on Sunday. And then taking a look ahead to Monday in the Premiership, of course, on Monday, uh, we've got the Bellevue Aces hosting the Wolverhampton Wolves. And it's Peterborough Panthers against the Sheffield Tigers at the East of England Arena. 
And then we've got National Development League action on Tuesday at the Coliseum, where it's the Plymouth Centurions versus the Oxford Chargers. And that's how things look for the next week ahead. We'll be back with you next Wednesday for the next episode of No Breaks, No Fear. And, of course, keep up to date with everything happening across British Speedway on our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We'll have uh, reaction, we'll have photos from during the meetings and updates. And, of course, if anything changes with rain-offs or anything like that, you get all the uh, latest news there as well. And, of course, all the information in depth on the main britishspeedway.co.uk website. Have a great week wherever you're heading to watch your British Speedway and we'll catch you next week on the next episode of No Breaks, No Fear. Goodbye for now. No Breaks, No Fear. The official British Speedway podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Sports Social Podcast Network. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com renew to learn more.